Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 93. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 9. Hey, Chapter 9, Hypothesis Testing. We're talking about P, running a hypothesis test about a population proportion. Now let's go over to our PowerPoints. Our examples, we're comparing uh, a new letter uh, to an old letter for getting donations. Now, uh, the new letter, we went ahead and did a sample. And the question is, can we conclude that the new letter is more efficient? Is the proportion more than 0.15? So the, the old proportion, the population proportion for the contribution uh, letter was 0.5. So if the new letter from a sample, if we can reasonably conclude that it's more than 0.15, then we want to uh, send out this new letter. So we set up all of our data, and here's our picture. It's going to be on the upper end. There's our reject region. There's our fail to reject region. Uh, we come all the way down. We have uh, some different formulas. We've been using these for many chapters. This is for uh, Z for a proportion. And then we come to our conclusion. Let's go over to Excel. So can we conclude that the new letter is more efficient? Uh, is, not is, not is, not in, I mean, is the proportion more than 0.15? Now the trick is always, at least uh, most of the time, you want to come down to the alternative and put the operator. We've already seen this in a few videos how we do this. So we come down here, we put our, our pi, there's our uh, h sub 1 and our proportion. And so we want to ask the question, is it more? So we say greater than. Then for the null hypothesis, we simply flip the sign, less than, and be sure to always put the equal sign. We have an alpha of 0 0.05. Uh, we also, uh, in the original uh, setup of this problem, we did a sample of size 200. And the number of contributions we got was 35. So we went ahead and calculated our proportion. 35 divided by uh, 200, 0.175. So is the difference between this uh, sampling error, is it significant or not significant? If it's not significant, we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis, which that it's uh, less than or equal to. If it is significant, uh, then we will uh, reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis, and then we have our new letter that should bring in more financial donations. First, we want our critical value, or our uh, z. And we're going to use our norm inverse. Now, this is on the upper end, right? So we have our little picture here. So we want uh, to come over here, equals norm norm for normal. Now, we assumed every single binomial uh, confidence interval, etc., that I've done all the way back to chapter 5. I proved all of the binomial tests. But this one, we just assumed that they all passed, and they did. And so we're going to use the norm s inverse. Norm for normal, s for uh, standard normal on the inverse, because we're trying to get our critical value. And what's the probability? Oh, yeah, we use alpha. But this would be on the low end, so we have to say 1 minus. And then enter. So 1.6465 is going to be our hurdle, our critical value. And we can see that in the picture over here. There's our hurdle or critical value with alpha equal to 0.15. All right, so our decision rule, if our calculated test statistic is greater than 1.65, we reject h sub 0 and accept h sub 1. Otherwise, we fail to reject h sub 0. I hope I'm confusing you, but by now you should get used to it. h sub 1, h sub a, those are just uh, different uh, symbolic no uh, representations of what? The alternative hypothesis. All right, now we've got to calculate our standard error. And we've seen this formula before. Uh, equals, and we'll do square root, and it's going to be our pi boop, times 1 minus our pi. This is the po assumed population proportion, and then divide by our n. Now, the order of operations 
will work just fine here. I can see I didn't hit shift date. That's why you never always should use the number pad. Uh, pi times 1 minus divided by n, and the order of operations will work just fine there. And we get 0 0.025. Now, our test statistic is the same as other test statistics. It's going to be whatever sampling error we have divided by our standard deviation. So equals, open parentheses, our sample proportion minus our assumed population proportion divided by our standard error. We get 0.99. Ah, our conclusion. This is comparing Z test statistic to our critical value. Because 0.99 is less than 1.65, we fail to reject H sub 0. The evidence suggests that the new letter is not more effective. The difference between 0.175 and 0.5 seems to be due to sampling error. We fail to reject. Remember, we don't say that it's false. We just say fail to reject. But the evidence can suggest something. Now let's do our uh, p-value. And p-value will lead us to the same conclusion, except for when we calculate our p-value, we'll compare it directly to our alpha. So equal, and uh, we're on the upper end, so we have to do 1 minus norm for normal, s for standard, and the dist will give us the probability. We just need our test statistic, that right there. Zip. And this should be quite a bit uh, larger, 0.16. So the rule is we take if p is less than or equal to our alpha, we would reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, it's much bigger. Uh, so we cannot reject the, we cannot accept the alternative hypothesis. We just must fail to reject and assume that that's uh, uh, good evidence to say that the new letter is not more effective. All right, uh, there's p, there's t. We looked at the t functions, the norm, s functions. We talked about the steps in hypothesis testing, saw a bunch of examples. All right, chapter 9. We'll see you next chapter.